We're going to pick it up next week. All better. Go back and see Sister Tina. You're going to receive a free mask. She'll make sure you get your names. Are right, everybody ready to give? Thank you all for your faithfulness and giving. Let's hope you all as high as you want God to take you financially. Let's recite this together now as an act of faith. From our house and release it into yours. Because I am a tithe and a consistent giver, the divine is the music of my life. As I give today, I'm believing that according to your word, grace abounds in every area of my life. Health and healing, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses. Thank you, God, for watching over your word to perform it in my life, my family, and with my money. You have blessed me to be a blessing, and I have more than enough to give so that your vision and purpose for this house may be fulfilled. Amen. Amen. If you're facing the right of the section that you're seeking again, I ask you to give you instructions while the choir sings, let the people of God give. Every day is important. But when I do it by myself, 
it's great. But when I come together with other believers, it's greater. This is the best day of the week. As we are preparing to go to God in prayer, I want you to consider on today that I'm not just praying for my needs. I'm praying for my neighbor. And my neighbor's praying for their neighbor. And then corporately, we're going to believe it as it already has happened. Because prayer just ain't about prayer. Prayer is about faith. So when I go down on my knees, I'm praying for what I already see. And I'm asking you today to consider praying corporately for better days ahead. For every seat to be filled, for souls to be saved, for this community to be enlightened. Pray for the preacher, pray for the deacons, pray for the praise team, pray for FCC that will be better. As everybody is standing, as they're singing, we're going to call, amen, Minister Moore to the podium. Amen. She's going to lead us in this moment of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Father, I just want to say, oh God, Lord, we want to say as the one body in Christ Jesus, that Lord, if we had 10,000 tongues, it still wouldn't be enough to praise you for all that you've done for us, oh God. Lord, we glorify you. We honor you, oh God. We worship you, oh God, for you alone are worthy, oh God, to be praised. Father, we just want to humble ourselves before you, O oh God, the Almighty King. Lord, you are the true God. You are the true Lord, O oh God. And Lord, we just want to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, for this is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad there in you, O oh God. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you will continue to knit us together on one accord in you, Christ Jesus, O oh my God. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that as we prepare, when we leave on today, oh God, that we can walk out the door saying, what a time we had in you, Christ Jesus. Lord, we know you are already present, oh God, and we thank you for your presence, oh God. Father, we pray that you would just continue to lead us and to guide us, God, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for our senior pastor, oh God. Lord, oh my God, Lord, give him a double portion of your anointing, oh God. Father, just dip him down, just flip him over, oh God, in your anointing, oh God, in your love, oh God. Father, just, well, Lord, when he says I can't, tell him he can do all things through you, Christ, who strengthens him, oh God. For you are his source, oh God. You are his joy, oh God. You are his way maker, oh God. You are his king, you are his savior, oh God. And we thank you for him, oh God. We thank you for his wife who stands by his side, oh God. We thank you for her love, oh God. Father, we just ask that you continue to bless them, oh God. Lord, bring them all the more closer together on one accord in you, Christ Jesus. And we praise you and we thank you, oh God. And then, Lord, the children, the natural children, oh God, as well as the spiritual children, oh God. Father, we ask that you just continue to bind us together in you, Christ Jesus. Father, help us to glorify you, O oh God. Help us to help them, O oh God, lift you up in spirit and in truth. These things we do ask and pray, O oh God. Father, all of our cares and our concerns, O oh God. Lord, all we got to do is leave them at the altar, Lord. Put them at your feet, O oh God. And even on this week, O oh God, I heard that if you have any problems, Lord, as Pastor Lambert has already said, Lord, we go in faith, O oh God, like Paul and Silas did. They began to pray and to sing songs of praise unto you, O oh God, even being locked up after being beaten up, O oh God. They praise and they worship you, O oh God, and you moved on their behalf, O oh God. And we just ask you that you would move on our behalf, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we glorify you.
you and we honor you on this day. These things we do ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let's pray. Father, we thank you now for the preaching privilege. Stand in me as I stand for you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable in thy sight, O God. You are my strength and my redeemer. Let he that hath an ear hear what you have to say to the church. Speak, Lord. Your children are listening. Speak, Lord. We are listening right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Those that have a Bible, turn to meet with me to Galatians chapter 6, verse 17. Galatians chapter 6, verse 17. When you found it, stand for the reading of it. When you found it, say, I got it. It's on the screens. In the New Living Translation, it sounds, sounds like this. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks or the scars that I belong to Jesus Christ. Let me read again. From now on, don't let anyone trouble me with these things, for I bear on my body the scars that show I belong to Jesus Christ. Can you read that with me now? This time when that word says marks, say scars. Read it again now. From now on, don't let anyone trouble me with these things. For I bear on my body. Y'all may be seated. Last Monday while I was in the airport, traveling to Alabama for my training, my coworker that was sitting next to me, just out of nowhere, she said, he's a veteran. As I looked up to make, take notice of who she was talking about, it was not his camouflage carry-on that gave him away, nor was his service cap that gave him away that he showed that he was a part of the armed services, but it was his battle-scarred legs that identified honor rather than a badge of dishonor. This morning, many of us who have been serving in the Lord's army, we have battle scars that signal to, to others who we belong to. On this Veterans Day weekend, I want to preach the battle scars of the believers. Everybody say that with me, the battle scars of the believers. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, that's what I'm going to preach about. The battle scars of the believers. Tell the other neighbor what I'm going to preach about. The battle scars of the believers. Most of us do not sport flawless bodies. Underneath our garments are scars that tell a story of the pain that we have suffered and the things that we have been through. Under our ecclesiastical clothing and underneath our, our Sunday morning beds, there are marks, blemishes, and scars that testify that we've encountered some encounters that made us hurt and even made us cry. Unless it is obvious to the eyes and evident to the viewing, most of us don't go around unveiling and revealing the scars of the pain that we have gone through. Just looking at the smoothness of our flawless bodies, just looking at my smooth skin, as pretty as it is. This dark chocolate. I'm trying to do that. Y'all see that? Hallelujah. Beyond this, this dark chocolate, if I didn't tell you, you would not know about the time that I was in the fourth grade and I was pedaling on a bike that didn't even have pedals on it. Some of y'all don't know about that. All it had was the rod in the middle. It didn't have the pedal when you put your feet on it. That's how poor we was. And I fell, and that the rod of that pedal went up my, my pan head and lodged into the back of my right knee. Had to go to children's hospital. I cried like a baby. I still remember laying out in the street. I don't know if my sister remember that. She may have want to push me. <laughs> That pedal was upside in my knee. They had to be very careful of taking the pedal out of my knee. 
I went to the hospital. I received all kinds of stitches that even right now the scars are still there. But you wouldn't know it just looking at me like this. You wouldn't know about the time that my left elbow was seared by an iron. When well, my left elbow touched an iron and look like I've got a burn scar on my left elbow. You wouldn't know that just looking at all this glory here. You wouldn't know by the time I went to the surgeon, and right here the surgeon cut me because I had a lipoma mass in my chest. All you see is this good clothing, but you don't see the scars underneath your clothing. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I got scars you can't see. Y'all would have to see it to believe it. All of my scars, praise God, are a testimony of my tough times. Of what I've been through, but not just what I've been through, but what I've made it through as well. Just like the veteran at the airport, the scars on his legs identified his service in the armed forces. It was evident who he belonged to and what he had been through. The battle scars of us as believers that most of us cannot see. They tell a story not only about sainthood, but they tell a story about service. They are an undeniable defense of our Christian testimony that God kept me, God never left me, God protected me, God saw me through some tough times. Everybody shout scars. scars. They are an undeniable defense of our Christian testimony. God has allowed them so that no one could doubt. They might try to doubt what you say, but when they see your scars, they cannot doubt what they see. The world may try to doubt that you are really who you say you are, but some of us in this room, we got scars to prove who we are. That God has brought us a mighty long way. That God in his keeping power has never failed us. When folks see your scars, they have to conclude that you gotta belong to God. Is there anybody here that can testify you have scars that prove you belong to God? I have one witness. I said, anybody in here have some scars that prove you belong to God? And that tell the neighbor, I know I belong to God. I know as your pastor, it looks like I've lived a flawless, unbothered, attack-free life, but I have the scars to prove that I belong to God. That God is in me and that God is for me. God is in my heart. And it's proof because I'm not in jail. Oh, bless his name. I'm not just a saint, but I'm a survivor. Where are my other survivors at? I said, where are my other survivors at? Be a witness and say, I'm not just a saint. Tell your neighbor, I'm a survivor. I need to know who I'm preaching to. Who in here has scars to prove that you are a survivor? Some survive relational scars. Somebody said that they loved you but then turned around and hurt you. Some of us got been done wrong at work scars, been done wrong by family member scars, been done wrong by church folk scars, endured emotional pain scars, mental scars, and even physical scars. The Apostle Paul had his apostolic ministry doubted by many others who knew of his past they said, Paul, when we look at your past, you cannot belong to Jesus. Paul said, you may try to doubt my identity, 
but you cannot adopt who I know I am. That's a folk that know what your past is, and they say, sure, you can't belong to God, but all you got to do is lift it up and say, look at that, bam, I know I belong to God, bam, I know I belong to God. I know it's ugly, but it's my testimony. 
Some of us got some ugly testimonies, but we're not ashamed of it. Who would test? I got some ugly testimonies, but I'm not ashamed of it. Come on, Pastor. Paul said, I desire to know Christ through the fellowship of his suffering. Christ suffered scars from beatings and nails. As a matter of fact, Thomas said that I would not believe that he is raised up until I see the scars in his hand. When Jesus walked through that door on that, that resurrection morning, he told Thomas, Thomas, come here and let me show you the scars in my hand. Some folk will never believe who you really are until they know the scars you have. Jesus said, Thomas, come here. Put your hands in my hand and let me show you the scars in my hand. Can y'all imagine how Thomas must have felt and said, you are God. You are the risen Savior. Every now and then you are testing for, come here a little bit closer. I know I look squeaky clean. I know I look like I ain't never been through nothing. But feel this right here. I got a scar right here that shows that I've been through some stuff in the back of my knee and on my elbow. Y'all listen, God been good to me. So you won't both just look at your little outside, but don't just look at my outside. Look at the stuff you cannot see. And you will shout for me. God is a keeper. Every Christian has to go through some encounters like Christ to prove your connection with him. You have got to go through some stuff every now and then to prove your connection with him. You got to go through some stuff like being rebuked, criticized, lied on, betrayed, denied, scoffed at, and mistreated. Don't be ashamed. Just show your scars and declare I'm connected. Everybody declare I'm connected right now. Tell your neighbor I'm connected. Not only did Paul's scars dispel the doubt of his connection, but Paul's scars also they dispel the doubt of his commitment. Number two, scars dispel the doubt of our commitment. Say that with me now. Our scars Class, read it together. Let me tell you what commitment is. Commitment is staying the course despite the difficulty. Paul stayed the course. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul said that he had been beat three times with rods. He had been stoned once. He had been shipwrecked three times. His encounters proved his commitment to the cause of Christ. You see, when you are committed, when you go through something, you don't just give up. When you are committed, you don't just suffer something and then say, I quit. But when you are committed, you say, I'm going to hang in there. I ain't giving up. I'm going to stick with Jesus. When people see your scars, they have to know of your commitment. It's like this. I know what y'all, don't, don't, don't beat me down. Listen. If you see a woman who's being mistreated over and over by her husband, a black eye one week, another black eye the next week, you call that crazy. She says she's committed. Uh oh. You got quiet to hear that. You call it crazy. She calls it committed. That she ain't giving up on her marriage. That's how it is when you love Jesus. When you're in this thing for the long haul, you may go through some stuff, but you say, I ain't giving up just because of difficulty. Paul's scars prove his connection, his commitment, but lastly, 
Paul scars tell your neighbor, neighbor. Yeah. Paul scars oh, prove his recovery. Come on, Pastor. Yeah. My third point. Somebody shot my scars. Prove my recovery. Not only do my scars prove that I've been hurt, here's the shouting part, but my scars prove that I've been healed. Yes, I got 20 year old, 20, something like 50 plus year old scars, but thank God they proved that I've been healed. Not just I've been hurt, but I praise God that I've been healed. How many of you can thank God right now that you've been healed? Relational scars, but I'm healed. Emotional scars, but I'm healed. Family scars, but I'm healed. Recovery is defined as a return to a normal state. In his song, Heal, Donald Lawrence wrote in his lyrics, got a story to tell you about some things that I've been through, but I'm healed. Yes, I'm healed. Had some ups and some downs. I'm waiting on y'all. And level to the ground, but I'm healed. Yes, I'm healed. I had to wrestle all night long, wondering what went wrong, but I'm healed. Yes, I'm healed. Had some sunshine and some rain. Some heartaches and some pain, but I'm healed. Yes, I'm healed. How many days of testimony? I'm healed. I'm recovered in Jesus' name. I'm not crying over the hurt. I'm rejoicing over the healing. I'm not crying over the hurt. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. I'm not crying over the hurt. I'm rejoicing over the healing. Now put a praise on it right there. I'm not crying over the hurt. I'm rejoicing over the healing. Thank you, God, that I've been healed. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Somebody pump your chest and say, I'm healed. Shout, I've been healed. Look at somebody shout, I've been healed. Yes, I've been hurt. But thank God that I've been healed. He served a Savior who died from the hurt. That was Friday night. But that Sunday morning, he got up healed. He was fully recovered. One Friday night they scarred him because of his connection and his commitment. But on that Sunday morning, he recovered. I mean, you can thank God that you recovered from some stuff. Thank God that I recovered from some stuff. Praise your name that we recovered from some stuff. Let's take the next minute and give God praise for all the stuff we are coming from. Yes! Come on, thank God. Thank Him for all the stuff you are coming from. I got scars to prove that we are coming. I need to heal. Somebody shot here three times. And then put a praise on the third time. Should have lost my mind, but I'm healed. I should be praising, but I'm healed. I should be out, but I'm healed. I should be down, but I'm healed. Thank God that I'm healed. I know I belong to Him. I know I belong to Him. I know I belong to him. Praise to Jesus. Praise to Jesus. Well, I wish
which we can tell somebody, don't tell somebody, just look at me and say, neighbor, don't look at my hurt. I said, neighbor, praise God for my healing.
If that would be you today, I want you to be praying about it. Because in a single call, I want you to make a decision. The Bible said the day you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. You don't have to come up and say anything. All I want you to just stand in just a second. We're going to give you a chance to connect with this, this lovely church family. Maybe you came here with the intention of connecting with this local church, of connecting in covenant with Christ. Church, y'all be praying right now. Father God, touch them in the name of Jesus. Touch them in the name of Jesus. Touch families in the name of Jesus. They left home with the mindset that today is our day. Single ladies, touch them in the name of Jesus. Let them make a decision for you and for your church, God. But I would love to share with them into the faith. Touch them in the name of Jesus and we'll give you the praise. If I pray for you and you want to respond, stand right now. If I pray for you and you want to respond, amen. Come on, clap, y'all. Come on, clap right now. God is added to the church. Dr. Morris, praise God for you. Brother Boyd and Venus, thank you, praise God for you. Sister Williams, thank you, praise God for you. Y'all ain't clapping good enough. Clap for him real good. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God.